In these next few examples, I'm going to be really brief in my explanations. I do expect you to fill in the details, but I'm going to give you a really brief description because I want to look at, I want to have you be able to look at these things and sort of make that decision of does it converge, does it diverge, and what test am I going to use? That's sort of this, this higher level thought process. Before you get into the nitty gritty details, just think about the higher level thought process. What is it that I feel the series is doing and what would be the way I would show that rigorously? So let's look at this first one. 4 to the n, 3 to the 2n minus 1. So just rearranging this, I've got a 4 to the n, I've got a 3 to the negative 1, so I'll bring that out as a 3, and then I've got a 9 to the n. So just rearranging it slightly, I see that, oh, it's geometric, and therefore it converges. Now why can I conclude it converges? It's geometric with the ratio being 4 ninths, so that's smaller than 1, so it has to, dive, uh, so it has to converge. So how about this next one? So this is negative 1 to the n, so an alternating series, and our denominator is 2 to the 1 over n. Well, what's happening when n's getting really big? When n gets really big, the exponent goes to 0, 1 over n goes to 0, the denominator goes to 2 to the 0, which is 1. So the denominator is not even getting big. The denominator is not getting big, the terms can't be getting small. So terms do not go to 0. So series diverges by test for divergence. Okay, remember I said I was going to be brief in my explanations. Fill in the details. Show that the terms don't go to zero. Make sure you, you, you see why these things are the case. But here we're just noticing terms don't go to zero, diverges by test for divergence. What about this next one? Say I've got a factorial on the bottom, power on the top. This screams to me that I should be looking at a ratio test. A ratio test. So what is our ratio? So maybe I'll say ratio test. What's our ratio? So it'd be 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 there. So that's 2n plus 2 plus 1. So that's 2n plus 3 factorial times 2n plus 1 factorial all over 2n. So this then cancels down to 2 2n plus 1 factorial, well I get a 2n plus 3, a 2n plus 2, and then a 2n plus 1 factorial, which cancels with that in the top. So this ratio gets me down to here. And what's this doing? This is going to 0 as n goes to infinity. My ratio of terms is going to 0 as n goes to infinity, so smaller than 1, and therefore it has to converge. So it converges. How about this next one? Well, as n goes to infinity, the top's going to pi by 2, the bottom goes to infinity, so this is the terms are going to 0. What's tan of a large number doing? Arctan, sorry, of a large number, that's positive. So these terms are positive. Um, got a sequence of positive terms. What else can I say? Oh, but. The arctan function does, as I said, it goes to pi by 2, so it's bounded. So here, I would probably do something like arctan of n, n root n. That's smaller than pi by 2 over n root n. Now is that helping me? Sure, because now my terms are smaller than these things, which is essentially the terms of a p-series, n to the 3 halves. So now I would use p-series, results from p-series, and get that it converges. So therefore, that's what this triangle of dots means, it's therefore it converges. Again, I'm being really brief here, but you can fill in the details. I'm just giving you sort of a, the higher level perspective. When you're working on these questions, you want to be able to sort of quickly jump from, okay, what do I think is going to happen? What test should I use? Is that going to work out? Am I going to get to a P-series? Is it going to be geometric? You want to be always jumping around and trying to figure out what's going to work best. So it's a really quick thought process. So I'm trying to give you the higher level perspective here rather than getting into the nitty-gritty details. What about this last one? 
this last example here. Well, I notice that each term is an nth power. So this screams to me root test. Because if I can take the root, the nth root of the nth term, then things become very nice and simple. So I'm thinking here root test. Now that's going to check for absolute convergence. I need to be careful then that the terms aren't alternating in sign or doing other things because maybe this thing conditionally converges, but the root test is just going to tell me that it doesn't absolutely converge. Now one thing to note here is that the nth root of 2 is always bigger than 1. So the terms are positive. So it's all right to use the root test and check for absolute convergence because these things are always po already positive to begin with. So what's the root test say? It says take the nth root of your nth term. And that's going to be then just the nth root of 2 minus 1. So we're going to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the nth term. And that's equal to 0. And that's smaller than 1. So it converges by the root test.